Oke. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, afternoon. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our first forum uh, jointly organized with the Philippine Academy of Acupuncture Incorporated. So before we start, uh, we'll start with an invocation. Uh, is uh, Pastor Cesar around? Can he uh, lead us with an invocation? Pastor Cesar? How about, how about Dr. Jojit? Dr. Jojit? Doctor Jojit. Yes, sir. I'm I'm here. Doctor Jojit, can yes, you? Yes, I am around. Lead the opening prayer. Yes, let's let's pray. Let's put our um ourselves in the presence of the Lord, our dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this day that you've brought us together. We continue to praise you, and glorify, glorify your most precious name. Thank you for thy blessings, O oh God. Thank you for protecting us all through uh, these times. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us wisdom as we listen to the resource persons this afternoon, as we continue to understand how to handle and be able to manage mental health issues at the moment. Thank you, O oh God, and please um, um, keep us from all distractions and give us the concentration and the focus so that we will be, uh, we can learn more this afternoon and um, be able to understand how best we could cope um, with uh, our situation right now. Bless the speakers, bless the administrators of this forum, bless the organizers, dear God, and we continue to um, give you honor in all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Doc Georgie. And again, yeah. welcome to our first forum on mental health, uh, the World Association for Psychosocial Rehabilitation in partnership with the Philippine Academy of Acupuncture Incorporated. So I request, may I request participants to uh, register on the chat so we know uh, who we, who who are present and what organization you represent. Okay, so before we start, we'll uh, uh, to, to introduce to you what WAPR is all about, it is the World Association for Psychosocial Rehabilitation. Can you have the slide, please? Our president is Ms. Uh, Lucita Lasso. We fondly call, call her Lucy. Okay, so the, our, uh, the Philippine chapter of the global WAPR was established in 1986. We are composed of psychiatrists, psychologists, and other uh, advocates who, who wants to advance mental health in our country. So our mission is to disseminate the principles of psychosocial rehabilitation Ibig sabihin, we, we focus on the aftercare of patients and families to improve their lives uh, as in, uh, indiv uh, individuals suffering from mental health condition. Uh, the board has, uh, with Dr. Ignacio as our founding president, uh, she is a psychiatrist. Uh, now we have Dr. Doc, uh, Dr. Lucita Lasso, a psychologist, as our president. And with us in the board is former secretary of the SWD, Cora De Leon, uh, Ms. Marianne Mendoza, formerly with the uh, commissioner of the Civil Service Commission, Dr. Tan Cho Xiong, a psychiatrist from the Metropolitan Hospital. Uh, I'm also a member, I'm a, a vice president, coordinator of the Alliance of Filipino Families for Mental Health. We also would have in the board, uh, Mr. Eugenio Ladrido, uh, Dr. Imelda Martin, uh, Ms. Rodora Nograles, Dr. Sita Soriano, Dr. Elizabeth Santos, Ms. Nadia Trinchera, and Dr. Ben Vista. Okay. So for our advocacy, uh, we, we uh, 
Aside from psychosocial rehabilitation, we want to promote mental health and to prevent mental disorders and to create awareness about mental health, to strengthen leadership and governance and uh, accessible recovery-oriented mental health services. For the Philippine, uh, uh, Philippine Academy for Acupuncture Incorporated, we would like to request Dr. Tan Chui Cho, its president, to share us about uh, its uh, advocacy. Dr. Tan? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, Doc, we yes. can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes, Doc, we can hear you. A PAAI, or Philippine Academy of, Academy of Acupuncture, we are an organization of uh, medical as well as non-medical acupuncturists. And all our members are certified by the PTAC or Philippine, how do you call it? Philippine Institute of Traditional and Alternative Healthcare. Okay. So we've been, we have around a, a 10 year of history. Okay. And uh, our mission, can you show us the mission, uh, Jackson? Show us the mission, our vision. Yeah, our vision is uh, to make use of acupuncture as an integral component of the right to health of, of the Filipinos, okay? And contributing to the realization of the health in the hands of the people, okay? So another thing is that the vision is that the development of different aspects of TCM as an integrative response to the people's health, well-being, and dignity, okay? And uh, this is very important because uh, the, uh, I think it's very timely for us to have this meeting because uh, the President uh, Duterte just signed the mental health law, I think, in 2018. And also in 2019, we have this universal uh, health care, which uh, will also include acupuncture. So we are very happy today that uh, both our groups, uh, WAPR and Philippine Academy of Acupuncture, we have common, we have common goal for the health and well-being of our countrymen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Tan Cho Chong. Yes. Okay, as we proceed, uh, uh, I would like to remind our participants that this is the first session of the three-session webinar. Uh, the uh, other schedule will be on August 8th and August 22. Okay, so uh, to introduce our first speaker, uh, our president, uh, the president of the Philippine World Association for Psychosocial Rehabilitation. Um, Dr. Lucy Lasso uh, completed her studies at the University of the Philippines. She's right now our principal investigator on a study conducted by WAPR Philippines titled Defining the Mental Health Research Agenda. And this is funded by the Philippine PCHRD. Philippine Council for Health Research and Development. She is also a former faculty of the UK Department of Psychology. Lucy is also uh, worked with uh, the DOLE, Department of Labor and Employment, and Tess. Her uh, fortunate to have her with us and share her ex uh, experiences working with uh, advocates of mental health. Uh, so friends, let's welcome Dr. Lucita Lasso. Can you hear me now? Yes, Doc, we can hear you. Okay, does that mean I should stop my video since I'm on screen share? Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, you can just continue, Doc. Okay. Uh -oh. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much, Jackson, for hosting us. Um, uh, it's a pleasure, and I think we have to thank the pandemic, the COVID, no? because many of us are able to come together on a Saturday afternoon when we usually are would be gallivanting around. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, it seems we are being galvanized together by, the, uh, by this pandemic. Now, let me... Uh, I'm flashing now the slide, <clears throat> which uh, is entitled, Take Charge of Your Mental Health in the Time of the Pandemic. You will note that the theme of this three, uh, uh, three uh, 
day seminar or webinar uh, is take charge of your mental health. And in a short while, I will explain why that is so. <clears throat> and as was mentioned, just for you to have an, an idea of where we are, <clears throat> the three sessions is setting the context. Uh, and then second is looking at the pandemic in perspective. And the third one is some tips on the house of mental health care. You will have uh, self-care specifically. So you will have more of these in the coming uh, sessions. <clears throat> okay. Specifically, the objectives of this, um, let me just expand this. Um, okay. <clears throat> is it bigger now? Uh, uh, Doc? Is Excuse me, uh, we're seeing the last slide from the previous one. Yung current slide niyo parang hindi pa nabuksan. Itong objectives? Opo. Is it there now? Not, not, uh, on my side, not yet po. Anybody seeing? No, parang wala no. pa yata, Doc. I don't see anything. I don't yeah. see anything. See it? Ano, uh, Doc, let's uh, restart it. Ah. Can you okay. reshare it now? Can you open it again? Uh, let me see. Uh, <clears throat> Click on the share button, the green button, Uli, Doc. Green button. On the center. The one that... Uh... Ito, 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 ito. Okay. Yes, doc. Is it there? Uh, not yet, Doc. Not yet? Ayan. It's starting now. No, but that was the previous one, no? That was the intro. Let me put that down now. So what I need is... Nawala yata. Doc, is it the session one? Yeah. Uh, or would you like me to, ano, uh, I'll, I'll sure. open it. Sige, would you? I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll open it for you. Share? Ayan na. Is it there? Do you see it? Uh, we see it now. Okay. Yeah, we can see it now. Uh, yeah, it's, it's there now, though. Uh, we should be on frame three objectives. Yeah. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> you will notice that this is a joint undertaking of the WAP. Uh, Whopper and uh, Paai. Thanks to our common member, Dr. Tan Cho Chong, who actually pushed for this. And if you will recall in the introduction, one of our areas of work is uh, to promote uh, mental health and prevent disorders to the extent that you can. No? So essentially, this webinar is meant to promote mental health among the general population, to raise awareness on the need for self-care in mental health, and to encourage participants to engage in mental health care. That is in recognition of our current reality that COVID-19 is a global challenge to health in general and to mental health in particular. Uh, <clears throat> when I say <clears throat> we want to promote mental health of the general population, um, you will he see here a visual where you can imagine the entire uh, triangle or pyramid to be the entire population, which can be segmented into specific groups. You have at the bottom, those who are assumed not to have any problems who are assumed to be mentally healthy. That's actually the bigger mass. And then those with no clinical diagnosis, but could be experiencing some problems, and then those who are really declared and diagnosed as mentally ill. You will notice that if you look at the proportion in the general population, or WHO statistics, ang totoo, itong mentally ill mo, mga 20% lang, and your no clinical diagnosis and mentally healthy would comprise the 80%, okay? <clears throat> so institutionally, in, the, in our society, there is or there is mental care, health care for the mentally ill. So you have the clinical treatment that takes you to the hospitals uh, and secondary uh, health units. No? Now, the no clinical diagnosis, the declarado may sakit, mental illness, there is no clear cut um, service for them. What we are hoping is that eventually we will have community-based mental health services. So yung mga nandito sa category pangalawa, masasalo natin and prevent them from maturing into full-fledged mental disorders. So for example, we could have people who are near, who are suicidal and who might be at the break. Ngayon yun, kung ma -early, magkaroon ng early detection, masasalo natin so that they don't go far beyond no? or go, go into the clinical categories. 
and then you have the bigger mass, <clears throat> uh, which is really the 80%, if you like, where we need to promote mental health. Kasi yan, uh, what we are realizing now is, and I will discuss in a short uh, while, mental health is not a static condition, meaning to say, today you may be okay, but if you go through this pandemic, eh, pwede kang matiriring, no? For some reason or another. So, <clears throat> um, we're hoping that we will be able to preserve the mental health, maintain the mental health of those in this category by taking promotional measures. And this kind of discussions that we're having are initiatives in order to promote mental health. Because we realize that pandemic is a risk for all, but the ability to cope varies, no? For example, if you compare, uh, you have <clears throat> the poor people as opposed to the upper middle income, upper income, the rich. They may have a lot more risk factors militating against their mental health. Kasi, Low nang income mo before the pandemic, you're struggling. Your job is precarious. Dumating si pandemic, no work, no pay, and you may even lose your jobs totally. I was listening last night to the ABS-CBN casualties and nag ka, no? Then you have OF OFWs who are being repatriated. Ikumpara mo yan, doon sa mga upper middle income, upper income, and the rich, May savings, may insurance yan, kahit paano na pang salo. They have some form of social protection. Ang poor will have to depend on lining up for the social amelioration. No? Then you have this new development now that children should go for either blended learning or internet-based. So what is <clears throat> another pressure? Children's schooling requires internet connection and having a computer. Just today, I got a text, somebody seeking help, paano mama ko bibili ng computer, hindi na makakapag-aral ang mga anak ko. Then, on top of that, you have an overlay of many other stresses, partly COVID-related, and some of them are pre-pandemic pa, no? You have, for example, someone is COVID-positive in the family. Yesterday in Valenzuela, a whole family was uh, apparently COVID-positive. So the whole family is in that situation. That's a stress, no? Or your wife gets pregnant. Madami daw nabubuntis ngayon. Na pandemic. Then, or a senior member is ill. And some uh, some dies, not days, I'm sorry. Someone dies due to COVID. That's certainly a stress and a strain to the family. So there is, uh, the pandemic is a risk for all of us. Some of these are stresses <clears throat> can affect any uh, economic class, but our ability to cope may vary, no? And therefore, the stress and the strain on mental health may also vary. So this is what this uh, frame is showing. Pandemic is a risk for all, but the ability to cope varies. So it, it may range from grief, anxiety, stress, shame, <laughs> depression, and so on, no? So, <clears throat> bakit ayaw gumalaw? The next train. Sorry. Uh, why am, am I not able? Okay. <clears throat> so, the men, okay. I just want to share this. Last night, I was listening to the YouTube, in the UK, there's a whole <clears throat> uh, footage on saying that the next pandemic is mental distress. But before that, I also saw another um, footage and said, the next pandemic is financial pandemic. Eh, kung may financial pandemic ka, eh, hindi ako magtatakang magkaroon ng mental distress. Kung mukhang magkarugtong, magkapatid itong uh, stress na ito, no? So I think uh, these are some of the risks that this pandemic is bringing upon us. And so, given the fact that we recognize the many risks, uh, we will have to take care of ourselves. So to be able to sustain ourselves over this uh, pandemic, over the period, and we don't even know how long it will last. And a part of the stress is that what? It is uncertain, it could be Maybe we can discover a vaccine in September or maybe not yet, much later pa. 
So, uh, in fact, I saw, I would like uh, Dr. Kalanika to share some of, I saw his posting and, uh, from another doctor, which tells us about the situation in the pandemic. Maybe we'll have time for that later. Our concern, therefore, <clears throat> is to promote self-care in mental health. Largely because even before the pandemic, uh, there are already certain realities, no? Locally, one in four persons will be affected by mental and neurological disorders. They wrote under the uh, Philippine Mental Health Law for some and neurological disorder. Then 4.4 persons were already affected by depression. 3.6 persons anxiety disorder. Even in a 4% and either anxiety or depression. So we already have quite a significant number to deal with. Then, I suppose against that is that in the Philippines, we already know the deficits in mental health services. That are 2.02 mental health workers per 100,000. So, let alone the fact that pati yung ating health workers, uh, frontline workers are already uh, having a shortfall. Then there are four beds in mental hospitals, one bed for mental health in general hospitals, and three in community residential facilities. So the, the scenario is not very flattering, no? Uh, in sum, makikita ninyo dito sa frame na ito, ang deficit natin sa mental health, yung magsisilbi sa atin, wala tayong masyadong aasahan. And therefore, how else can you do it? Begin with taking care of yourself before you even become a case. No? So this is why we say self-care in mental health is very important. Now, before I move into further into that, <clears throat> I'd like to remind everybody that in the last two years, 2018, nagkaroon ng bagong pananaw sa mental health, no? So that, and this is uh, articulated in the Lancet Commission report of 2018, where the essential points are, they say mental health is everybody's business. All the more, therefore, we should take care of our own mental health. Mental health is a task for both specialists and non-specialists. So, maski hindi ka psychiatrist or psychologist, or social worker, whatever, you should be engaged in uh, mental health, okay, promotion. Mental health care is a right. Maganda ito, WHO is promoting quality rights, but let's get real. Anong right ang ikiklaim mo kung walang mental health care services? Then it becomes meaningless. No? So this is why there are a number of actions that we will take, but as I said, we cannot depend on the services outside us. Therefore, let's begin at home. Let's begin with ourselves. Mental health is not binary. It is a continuum. Like we said, today you may be okay. Tomorrow, for some reason, grief, stress, extreme uh, pain, you may find yourself uh, in a state of depression or whatever. Okay. So... This uh, global call says we should focus and on reducing the treatment gap to improving the mental health of whole populations and reducing the global burden of mental disorder by addressing gaps in prevention and quality of care and to promote mental well-being, prevent mental health problems and enable recovery from mental disorders. So I thought I should flag this because these are the underpinning philosophies behind our advocacy for mental health self-care. Okay. Okay. So what is self-care in mental health? There are two elements. One is self-knowledge, meaning to say tayo mismo, we have to define to ourselves what are our unique mental health needs. And maybe here, some guidance is necessary. And once we know what our mental health needs are, then we can engage in what we call positive self-talk. Talk here does not necessarily mean um, literally uh, talking to yourself, but you know, the thoughts you entertain uh, is part of your self-talk. So 
these two elements are skills that we will have to learn over time. Okay. Next frame. <clears throat> now here I'm showing, uh, because we said the first element of uh, self-care and mental health is to uh, identify, recognize your unique mental health needs. Kasi hindi naman tayo pare-pareho. Therefore, these individual differences will reflect themselves in, the ter in terms of what we need, what care we need relative to mental health. Now, this will looks upon mental health from a holistic perspective. No, It begins with the physical, the psychological, the emotional, the spiritual, the personal, and the professional aspects of your life. All of that can influence our mental health. No? Okay. So the question you raise to yourself is the first step is, what are your mental health needs? Okay. Uh, in sum, when we ask the question, uh, why self-care in mental health? Because if we do not practice basic self-care, we may quite simply burn out. We will be unable to decompress and to find outlets for our stressors. And the less good care we take of ourselves, the less we will have to give for from an empty cup. In other words, the basic argument we're making is, well, we have to understand what is self-care as we try to define it. Simple lang naman dalawa, but it's not as simple as it seems. Pangalawa, um, we, we might find ourselves, if we do not take care of our mental health, we may drive ourselves to the brink where we will not be able to help ourselves and even help others, okay? Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is everybody's concern and the impact may vary from person to person. It could heighten anxiety and fear. It can drive some people to depression. It can be traumatic, lalo na yung mga namamatayan, okay? Na hindi mo man lang makita at the last moments. That can be very painful, no? The pandemic is a stressor, but it could be an opportunity to look inward find our resources, inner resources, and draw from it. Okay. So <clears throat> the next practical step is really recognizing the red flags in psychosocial stress. And some of these have to do with what? Your ongoing feelings of anxiousness, apprehension, dread, physical complaints, headaches, stomach aches, pain with no medical cause, Maski yung kabag kuminsan, sinyales din yan. Increase or decrease in sleep or appetite, low energy feeling, tired all the time. Ongoing feelings of sadness, worthlessness, guilt, tearfulness, anger, inability to accept reality, insensitivity or blaming others, loss of interest in daily activity at home as a whole. Difficulty in balancing personal and professional work. Pervasive feeling that nothing matters. Loss of connectedness with these pe those people around and in the general community. Already, if you experience any of this, kumisan lakad ka ng lakad, walang direksyon, sa loob lang ng bahay, meron kang para kang namuwari, pero hindi mo alam exactly di bakit ka worry, that might be an something, no? Okay. Now, to guide you in uh, assessing yourself, you sabi natin, you have to know, ano ba yung mental health needs mo? Uh, there is a, a checklist that has been developed. Much of this was actually developed in the context of a seven country study by the WHO, and which was also done in the Philippines. I will share this with you, but before I go on, I'd like to ask if uh, we should hear Rochi, uh, our community nurse who has been at the front lines also to share with us her thoughts from a health worker's perspective. And then later on, I hope we can have time to have an um, exchange, interactive discussion. No? Can we ask Roch to share at this point before I go on to the checklist? Okay, good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon. Sharing first, okay. 
Uh, okay. Hindi, hindi pa yata na properly introducing uh, Ms. Rochi. Sally, would you like to introduce okay. her? <laughs> okay lang, Doc. Uh, okay, wait. So, maybe, yeah. So that they know your background also, no? Uh, Miss Sally, your microphone's on mute right now. Uh, before... Before Sally will introduce uh, uh, Mam Roche, no? Mam Roche is also a, a board of uh, director of the uh, of Philippine Academy of Architecture, no? And I'd also like to acknowledge the Mr. Jason Tana, no? Our he's our technical person for this uh, seminar. Uh, see, Jason is also uh, with the board of uh, Philippine Academy of Architecture, and also see Lady, no? Our very efficient uh, secretary. Thank you, with Lady and Jackson, for all <laughs> all of this. Without your without your efforts, Anna, this wouldn't be <laughs> possible. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so okay, Sally, Sally. okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Tan Chu Chong. So we we have heard from uh, Dr. Lucy Lasso an overview of the mental health situation in our country. Uh, this. Uh, Added to this is the present uh, pandemic that has caused so much stress, uh, tension, depression, anxieties to the Filipinos. There is a way to prevent this, no? Uh, as what Miss Lucy was saying, we need to understand the illness, uh, be able to uh, cope and uh, see whether uh, are we able to recognize the red flags already? Okay. And uh, not to forget that everything will have solution. It will pass. There has to be faith and hope and observance of healthcare. We are very thankful that at this point in time, we already have the mental health law. Alam niyo naman siguro yun, ano? It was signed 2018 almost two years now, so that uh, the mental health law, we look into the needs no, of uh, the whole population. And all of us has, uh, all of us had advocates of mental health have something to share to make sure that people in the community are given the right information. We could help uh, the, uh, give awareness to people and fight the stigma. Kasi sa ngayon, mawalan ka ng trabaho, talagang napakahirap na, no? So what we will tell people, what people, uh, what we need to tell them is something that uh, kailangan alam natin na hindi na nakakadagdag sa kanilang uh, pressure or sa anxieties that they are encountering. So today we have, to, we have another speaker and uh, she is a licensed nurse. She's also a certified acupuncturist. Uh, she finished her BS in nursing in 1984 with a Master's of, uh, of Arts in Extension Administration. Okay. Uh, she's a community health nurse and uh, faculty at the Silliman University. As what Dr. Tan was saying, she's also a member of the board of uh, the Acad Philippine Academy of Acupuncture Incorporated. So friends, let's welcome Nurse Ruchi Cargara. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Sally, for your uh, very nice introduction. And also, I would like to say good afternoon to everybody who is participating in this um uh, lecture series okay can i go ahead can you hear me yeah please yes, please yes go okay ahead. yes miss so, please go ahead so i will share with you um i was given the task to share uh the perspective of health workers in relation to mental health which is um experience um, or mental health issues during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
So the, the objective of my sharing is to be able to share how, how health workers view um, mental health in relation to COVID-19 pandemic. So as what Ma'am Lasso, Professor Lasso have shared earlier, um, she said that only it's about 20% of um, patients who are diagnosed to have mental illness among the population. So according to the International Council of Nurses, mental health is crucial. It's, it's, it's how it's uh, being considered crucial to the well-being of individual societies and countries. So it has affected very much as to how people cope with um, the situation during the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And mental health problems are also common as what um, um, Lasso or Professor Lasso have stated earlier. And another, another reality that we saw is treatment is not available to most people. Because even um, in my own province here in Negros Oriental, we only have one mental health facility and we only have one doctor who comes to that facility, but she does not come on a regular basis. Uh, she comes on about two or three days a week to, to take care or to check on the patients that had been um, confined in, those, in that facility. And um, nurses, because uh, I especially mention nurses because nurses is the largest group of professionals who are usually closely taking care of patients, are important providers of treatment and care. However, uh, according to ICN or the International Council of Nurses, education is inadequate and the role is underdeveloped. They are only trained on the, the basic care and only a part of mental health is being discussed. Although uh, if we look at the program of the Depart Department of Health, uh, mental health, community men mental health is one of the programs that should be implemented under the non-communicable diseases. However, no person, specific person assigned under the DOH who is responsible in looking into the mental health problems or mental health issues of um, the community. And then I also try, would like to share with you um, common mental health realities that were observed during the pandemic. So first is public health emergencies may affect the health, safety, and well-being of both individuals and communities. So uh, it will cause, for example, insecurity, confusion, emotional isolation, and stigma. So I would like to give a specific example in relation to this. Like... Um, Aside from being a community health nurse, I also is the considered as one of the leaders in our community. And I have observed that there are a lot of residents who are experiencing um, insecurities, fear, and emotional isolation. Especially like, for example, the senior citizens that we have in our community. There are senior citizens who are living alone, alone in their homes. And like one retired teacher that we have, he used to, he used to go out every day to Siliman Campus and downtown to, to visit friends. But with the implementation of the ACQ, he has to stay home. And to him, it's some kind of, it, 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 um, it causes some form of emotional isolation. And for the individuals who had been infected with COVID-19 or those who are positive, they experience stigma because I personally, as a health worker, though I understood um, the, the possibility or the feeling or how the patient may feel, but 
considering that COVID-19 is highly infectious without treatment and without vaccination, is would experience fear of patients or persons who had been known to be infected with COVID-19. And for communities, owing to economic loss, work and school closures, inadequate uh, resources for medical response and deficient distribution of necessities. So like, for example, deficient distribution of necessities, the authorities or the government implemented lockdowns in some areas where more cases of COVID-19 has been found, but we have heard a lot of stories about residents having no food to eat because of the lockdown, but the authorities, the local government have not been providing them with the necessary or the basic needs, at least for the family during the days um, where they are locked down. And I was even saddened receiving a text from a friend that um, she's a nun and she's taking care of a community in certain parts of Manila. And I've heard a story that... that um, a father committed suicide because he could not withstand listening to his child crying because of hunger. And these things will result into a range of emotional reactions such as distress or psychiatric conditions and healthy behaviors such as excessive substance abuse and, and also very important is violence. Uh, we have heard reports that uh, domestic violence within the homes have increased because of um, all the stresses that the family are experiencing. And also non-compliance with public health directives. So I have experienced this in my own community. Being the president of our subdivision, um, we had a problem in implementing uh, home confinement, especially the, the young ones, the below 21, the wearing of masks, and the implementation of social distancing within the community. Because um, people were, um, and then for, for a few weeks or several weeks of ECQ, they would want to get out because they feel isolated. They have not met their friends. Um, they could not choose the food that they would want to eat. They cannot market like the senior citizens. They could not buy vegetables that they need and many others. And for the people who contract the disease, um, we often have a problem in the province, especially those who are coming from, from Manila and from Cebu with the because there is a mandate that LSI and OFW should be sent back to their provinces, uh, we have a problem currently because some of those who had been returning, who initially were found to be negative, um, had turned to be positive in their uh, later uh, swabs. And even those who had been those who have been made aware that they were positive for COVID-19 would escape from, from quarantine facilities and would go around their relatives because um, they had been out from the community for several months. And then another is uncertain prognosis, severe shortage of resources, imposition of unfamiliar public health measures that infringe on individual freedoms, financial losses, and conflicting messages from authorities cause widespread of emotional distress and increased risk for psychiatric illness. So there was even one time when a resident of our community who is a health uh, professional operating her own clinic, and she was once telling me that, mom, I am experiencing some sort of depression because um, so many things that comes into her mind, aside from financial losses, the fear, the fear of getting infected through her patients coming to her clinic. And the third is mom, mass home confinement directives, including stay-at-home orders, quarantine, and isolation, 
are new to almost everyone. So we all knew that this is the first um, in history. We can only remember the plagues and the uh, severe kinds or forms of pandemic in the Bible, but this is the current reality that we are uh, experiencing right, right now. And we know that we are not used to it. And the people still is having a difficulty imagining themselves or imagining ourselves going through with what we are heading through the new reality. And this usually leads to numerous emotional outcomes like stress, depression, irritability, insomnia, fear, confusion, anger, frustration, boredom, and stigma associated with quarantine, some of which persisted after the quarantine uh, experience. So as we open to OFWs and LSI, in my own community, there were a few OFW and LSI who returned from Manila and from their work abroad. And since I was the president of the community, residents where it started calling me, oh, we have heard that an OFW returned. How is he? And so I have to call the authorities and to confirm their certification being safe and from COVID-19 and to inform the residents because the residents are feeling that uh, they should avoid these people because they are OFWs. So the stigma that we associate with those, not just the infected, but people who might be traveling or coming from their travel from other places, sometimes we treat them as patients with um, having the high possibility of transmitting COVID-19. Then the fourth one is medical conditions from neutral, nat natural causes such as life-threatening viral infection do not meet the current criteria for trauma required for diagnosis of PTSD, but another psychopathology such as depressive and anxiety disorders may ensure. Because like, for example, the PTSD or post-traumatic um, syndrome disorder usually one of the major criteria is they are exposed to the, the actual trauma. But even during the COVID-19 pandemic, even people who have not been actually exposed to um, actually in, or an actual infected person or being infected, even if you just hear or listen from the news or television or scan your cell phone for um, the information that have been that has been posted, it will those informations could still lead to um, mental health issues in relation to COVID nineteen. And some groups may be more vulnerable than others to the psychosocial effects of pandemic, like people who contract the disease themselves, because we knew that. Um, unlike the other viral diseases, COVID-19 um, mostly or commonly affects the respiratory tract. And we know that patients would usually develop pneumonia and then um, on a fast pace, it will become severe and patients may die from that condition. And also uh, another group of vulnerable population, we have those at heightened risk, including the elderly, the young. Um, based on the IETF guideline, people below 21 are considered as high risk. And also people with compromised immune function, like cancer patients who underwent chemotherapy, SLEs, or those with systemic locus erythematosus and other conditions, and those living or receiving care in congregate settings like prisons or in uh, urban poor communities or mga poor families who cannot provide the social distancing requirement of the government. And people with pre-existing medical, psychiatric, or substance use problems are at 
increased risk for adverse psychological outcomes, psychosocial outcomes. And another group that is at risk are our healthcare providers um, because they are the ones who get in contact directly with those who are infected, especially those in the hospital setting. And not just in the hospital setting, but also in the communities because health workers are the ones who is uh, responsible or tasked to monitor patients or individuals, not patients, but clients who are in the quarantine facilities, the um, people under investigation or people under monitoring because they are the ones skilled to provide, uh, to do the monitoring and shortage of personal protective equipment. So lack of PPEs will expose or increase the risk among health workers in in getting or contracting the disease. Longer work hours, okay? And involvement in emotionally and ethically fraught resource allocation resources. And I know we could hear this from the radio, television, people complaining here and there about the allocation of resources. And for those I have heard from nurses, who actually were able to use the PPEs, they said it's quite difficult. And some of the nurses or health workers who are using PPEs in order to take care of COVID-infected patients, they said that we will not just drink water. Wag na lang kami uminom ng tubig because it's difficult na umihi pag you are using the PPE. Tapos, the others would say they will try to hold their urine because it's difficult to uh, take off the PPE and and urinate or go to the bathroom for to respond to the bodily needs. Okay, but we have to be we have to be happy that although uh, there is a risk that is involved and everyone is exposed to um, the pandemic, we know that most people are resilient and do not succumb to psychopathology or to problems, uh, psychopathological conditions, and they find new strength after the experience. And these people who have become resilient would be able to, uh, these are now the, they will now become the assets in the health system who would be able to assist us in helping others who are still coping and learning to deal with the situation. And the next is I tried to come up with recommendations as a health worker. Um, this includes the first one is prevention efforts such as screening for mental health problems, psychoeducation, and psychosocial support should focus on the vulnerable groups. It is important that health workers, uh, mental health professionals should provide a proper education, provide with um, factual or correct information regarding COVID-19 pandemic because a lot of a lot of information that are circulating which may not be helpful at all. So we have to help our population. And second, there is a need for health workers to take care of the self. So Professor Lasso mentioned this earlier. I think I need not elaborate each and every item because we have Still other sessions will be dealing with this individually, like in the interventions, um, how we could promote uh, mental health or how we could prevent mental illness among the second group of uh, population. So I will just read through the self-care activities or initiatives that we need to do for ourselves as health workers, not just for health workers, but individually, because as what uh, Dr. Lasso mentioned earlier, that mental health is everybody's business. We should not depend on psychiatrists, psychologists for our mental health, but we ourselves is responsible in keeping ourselves healthy. So the few things that are enumerated in here are feel free to express your feelings. So if we are feeling something, we need to share it to others who may be able to help us. 
and intentionally employ coping strategies, which will be discussed in the succeeding sessions in this series, and perform regular check-ins with yourself. And I think the next session will be about uh, checking ourselves whether we have psycho uh, mental health issues or problems and take breaks from the news and social media. So this is true because people who had been um, watching everything from the social media, I would use the term in Tagalog na praning. So there are people na napapraning because of what they see, what they read from the social media. And be fortified by remembering the importance and the meaning of our work or your work. Okay, so although we may not be 100% successful in the things that we do, but there are a lot of successes that we went through. So we have to be happy and to, to credit ourselves for that. Okay. Third is the need for taking care of your staff. If you are at the managerial level or middle manager, as a health worker, you have to help or to understand, to empathize with your staff by adjusting procedures and schedules whenever it is possible. But one of the problem nowadays is we run out, we lack health workers. Um, some of them had been sick, and we know that there were some who have died because of COVID infection. And then offer access to psychosocial support for our staff and monitor and review staff member well-being. Okay, so we should not assume that, for example, a nurse, a doctor, a midwife, um, a med tech, since they are health workers, okay lang na sila, but we also need to look into their well-being to review or to check on their mental health status. Create an environment of, of open communication. Because we said earlier that um, we have to be, we have to feel free to share our feelings. So we also need to listen to our staff. And the fourth one is the need to take care of patients. So we have to establish a system to identify and provide care for mental health conditions, especially that, that if our patient is a COVID patient, we know that a patient with COVID infection could not bring along with him a watcher who is a relative or anyone. But this patient would be taken care of, will be taken care of by healthcare professionals in the facility, but no family member can take care of him or her directly. Facilitate additional training for frontliners to deal with uh, psycho-emotional or mental health issues concerning our patients. We also need to verify referral pathways. So as health workers, we have to be familiar with the facilities where we could refer our patients. Provide clear, understandable communication to patients. Provide clear, okay? So incorporate guidelines about stress into general care practices. And then other recommendations include, authorities should implement a unified guidelines to avoid confusion Confusion not only among patients or community residents, but including health workers as well. Be proactive in implementing measures and equitable, there should be equitable distribution of resources to all qualified citizens. Number six is, and this is the last, leaders should serve as role models in executing the implemented guidelines so that others will follow because like I would like to show, to to uh, make this as an example to what happened in Cebu, and I think um, COVID nineteen infection is still increasing in Cebu, and I know I have watched one of the videos. The governor doesn't want to use the mask, so I think the leaders, if the leaders would 
uh, refused to follow the guidelines. So the members of the community would also try to emulate or to follow what the leaders had been doing. So in closing, I would like to share, um, I would like to share uh, two verses from the Bible uh, as what Professor Lasso said, in the self-care will, one of the aspects or areas in the will is spiritual care. So in line with that, I would like to share two verses from the Bible. This is from Psalm chapter 91, verses 2 and verse, verse 2 and 3, verses 2 and 3. So for Psalm 91, verse 2, I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So for Christians, we consider God as our refuge. But I know even if uh, for other religious groups like Muslims and others, they consider someone as their, their ultimate um, creator or their God. So we can consider them as our refuge, meaning we entrust our life, we trust them. And then in verse 4, it states that he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart or a shield or a protection. So again, we trust in the Lord and we ask for his protection from uh, COVID-19 infection so that uh, our population or we will not suffer from severe mental health um, distress. We will not be affected with um, anxiety and, and other forms of mental health uh, concerns or issues as we are experiencing the COVID pandemic. So. Dagang salamat or thank you for listening to my sharing. Okay. okay so I will turn you over back to Professor Lasso. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rochi Kagara, uh, yes, for your... You for for your sharing to us, no, making things light, no? Because with yes. the things that are happening now, everything seems to be parang, people seems to be part of the problem. We need people yes. who, to, who, has, who must be part of the solution. And being part of the solution is soundness, no? And mental yes, health, <laughs> balance. Yes, okay. po. Yeah, unfortunately, some people nowadays look at things in a gloomy uh, scenario na parang yes, uh, wala nang pag-asa, wala nang bigay si Kapitan. <laughs> so yes, that uh, when you say something negative and people around you are influenced of your negativity, wala na, saan na tayo pupunta? Uh, lalaki na yung problema. No? But if uh, they see mental health uh, frontliners, provide, provider, mental health providers na positive, giving yes, them uh, hope, no? Uh, this God, <laughs> sabi nga, we cannot depend on people, but we can depend on God because yes. He will provide for all our needs. Maybe, maybe COVID is just telling us, Uy, nakakalimutan yun na yata ako. I was the oh, one who oh. created you. <laughs> so I know what you need. Uh, unfortunately, people now are dependent on uh, anong mabibigay, ang trabaho ko, kung wala na si uh, ang anak ko o ang parents ko, papano na ako. So all this compounded with negative people around them, ang mangyayari is talagang ang suicide, depression, anxiety. Yes, but these are not helpful to us. So we need to give hope to people around uh, so, ang kailangan talaga is sound decision making. So, how can we be sound if we are part of the problem? So, really, uh, there is something na pwede nating uh, magawa no? for people out there na nawawala na ng pag-asa. Kaya, andito tayo. Uh, the Philippine Academy of Acupuncture Incorporated, the WAPR Philippines, we're here to tell people out there may pag-asa. There is a good reason bakit 
nagkaroon ng ganitong epidemya, uh, we all need to be parang i-ano tayo ng konti, i-ugibli ng konti para makita ng, natin na teka muna saan na ba tayo papunta with all our ano yung kaalaman ng tao no sinisira na nila kung ano yung ayos no so we have to go back to uh, ni, uh, yung kaayusan na ginawa in the very first place ng Diyos sa atin and thank you for giving us that quote from the bible that make us realize ang buhay talaga is not for ourselves yes. it is for others so we have time now for open forum Uh, Miss Lucy, you have something to say, to add, or Dr. Tan Che Chong? I think uh, si yeah. Mom Lucy would like to share with us the checklist. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes. Okay. Hindi pa ako tapos. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just finish, okay. I think, uh, shall I proceed now? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes, sure. Um, okay, I think I ended the, with this frame, recognizing the red flags in psychosocial stress. And I requested uh, nurse uh, Rochi to share with us what it's like on the ground. And we, we heard you know, a whole range of experiences of psychosocial stress or distress from the health worker to the ordinary uh, person. No? Now, so we go back to the theme. We said it's inevitable na makakaranas tayo nito. Some of us, maybe yung first three months wala, pero as the first three months of lockdown uh, was extended, then extended again, medyo nagkakaroon na ng discomfort. I personally, for example, I managed my first three months easily like a breeze. You know how I did it? Viber. I had a Viber group, Viber ther- I call it my Viber therapy. And the second was Netflix therapy. So thanks to COVID, nakapanood ako ng crash landing on you. Okay? <laughs> And other telenovelas. It gave me the time. Now, anyway, <clears throat> I think all of us will have to begin with the recognition if there are red flags. Meaning, meron na bang senyales that you are getting stressed? So the tool... The checklist that I'm about to give you may help you with that, no? As I was saying earlier, this one was developed in the context of uh, the WHO seven country study, uh, which particularly uh, uh, looked into uh, populations that were affected by disasters, natural disasters. Now, the pandemic obviously is a big uh, disaster, but Uh, let me now go through this. Those of you may want to, who may want to have a copy of this, please leave your emails if you don't have it yet, and we can email this to you. So you don't have to copy them now. But let me go through this. <clears throat> There are 13 questions in this checklist. Number one, do I get overly concerned with my health? Have I worried and consulted several doctors for which no physical basis have been found? Eh, pagka-clinical diagnosis ito, sasabihin sa'yo, hypochondriac ka na, no? But this could be just a reaction, transient, during the pandemic, okay? Then, do I have problems in sleeping, okay? You worry that anyone in the family might be affected. Pwede yung nagiging impact sa'yo, hindi ka makatulog, okay? So, three, is my appetite poor? Do I ha- often have uncomfortable feelings in my stomach, okay? Next frame. <clears throat> okay, do I get tired easily? Do I feel slowed down most of the time? Do I worry that oftentimes I cannot get my worries out of my head? Do I get anxious, frightened, or get jumpy? Do I feel pain or bloatedness in the stomach and have palpitations, dizziness, sweating, and trembling? Have I been feeling sad? If yes, do you, I feel hopeless. Yung iba are really driven to a point, katulad ng example ni Nurse Rochi, yung father na hindi niya mat, mas, matagalan pakinggan yung anak niyang umiiyak because of hunger or starvation. Nagpakamatay. No? The number seven, do I feel life, like life is not worth living? 
so that I think of hurting myself. Do I find myself easily irritated with those around me? Yung iba, high blood ka agad, walang ka bagay-bagay, you know? Then have there been problems with my sexual life? So it may find its way there. Has any member of my family, friends, complained of my drinking? Has anyone in my family been advised about medical problems related to alcohol abuse? Do I take prohibited drugs? Like, well, you can mention whatever drugs are used. Am I becoming forgetful? Do I find it difficult to concentrate? Have I noticed any interference in thinking? Or has anyone noticed anything unusual in my speech, thought, or behavior? Do I hear voices others do not hear? Do I feel that there is a plan to hurt me physically or emotionally? And finally, I have I noticed, have I noticed myself as being slow or lagging behind my coworkers, feeling that no matter what I do is never enough. Okay? So this is the first checklist. Then um, there is another checklist which pertains to basic needs and the lack of which may induce stress and anxiety. You know? Okay. Number one, alam na natin, economic loss. Eh, madaki yung mga driver, GP driver, for example, affected by this. In our neighborhood, I've seen some of them actually uh, begging already. You know? Food and water. In some areas, they are not able to access clean water and access to food. Housing and neighborhood, problems from change of residence. Or maybe I would rather cite here the case of the urban poor. Pinagla lockdown, pero baka because of the congestion in their neighborhood, they are more likely to acquire COVID. No? Work could be dissatisfaction with work, role interpersonal. I would say, in the context of the pandemic, the loss of work, the loss of jobs is a big issue. Education. Ito ngayon ang big anxiety natin, yung education ng mga bata. Can you afford a computer or do you have internet connections? Are the teachers, for example, prepared to do their blended learning in your area? Then legal conflicts with the law. Ito yung panghuhuli sa checkpoints. Uh, we know of one case where there was an exchange between an, an ex-military, uh, ex-army who, who eventually died, no? because he was being apprehended. Then health of other members of the family would be anxiety because someone is COVID positive. General social and cultural factors like difficulty in handling conflicts or family obligations. Your children, uh, I think uh, this is one major source of anxiety because care of children and how they're also affected by the COVID. Because children, if you lock them up for three continuous months or four months, can actually suffer, no? Similarly, with spouse and partners, other family members, and these violence and other adversities. I think here, one of our anxieties, if you will remember, just before the pandemic, you had the tal eruption. And then now you have uh, earthquakes, floods. Then there were again um, announcements about possible uh, volcanic eruption in some other areas. So there, the stresses can be, there could be overlay of stresses upon stresses upon the pandemic even, okay? So those are the social checklists. Now, we, there is a special checklist for burnout and this has to do uh, largely with the uh, health workers, okay? Let me run through it. And this will be the last. You tire easily. Do you feel fatigued rather than energetic? Are people annoying you, annoying you by their demands and stories about their daily activities? Are you increasingly critical, cynical, and disenchanted? Are you often affected by sadness you can't explain? Are you crying more than usual? Are you forgetting appointments, deadlines, personal possessions? Have you become absent-minded? 
are you increasingly irritable, more short-tempered, more disappointed in people around you? Are you seeing close friends and family members less frequently? Do you find yourself wanting to be alone and avoiding even your close friend? Are you too busy to even do routine things? Are you suffering from physical complaints like stomach aches, pains, headaches, lingering colds, and others? Do you feel disoriented or confused when the activity of the day stops? Have you lost interest in things, situations, people that previously you were interested in or even enjoy? Are you unable to laugh at jokes? Does sex seem like more trouble than it's worth? Do you have very little to say to people? Do you tire easily, feel fatigued rather than energetic? Are people annoying you by their demands and stories about their daily activities? Are you increasingly critical, cynical, and disenchanted? Are you often affected by sadness you can't explain? Are you crying more than usual? Are you forgetting appointments, deadlines, personal possessions? Have you become absent-minded? Are you increasingly irritable, more short-tempered, more disappointed in people around you? Are you seeing close friends and family friends, members less frequently? Okay, I think this was already mentioned. No? Okay, I think uh, I've read the others. Uh, do you feel disoriented or confused when the activity of the day stops? Are you unable to laugh at jokes? Okay, I think uh, this one's have been repeated. So th there is a set of questions that can guide you in assessing yourself. And let me end. Rochi ended up with a quote from the Bible, which is very well within our <clears throat> notion of mental health. Now, the reminder about taking care of oneself, I just picked this up. It popped up in my, uh, in my phone. Piolo Pascual says, take care of oneself. He, before the pandemic, he was set to fly to New York to shoot a TV special and to work on four upcoming films. So ever lockdowns are put in place as the virus spread rapidly. Everybody had to quarantine and fortunately was able to retreat along with his family to his home in Batangas. One of the first things he learned during the lockdown was the importance of taking care of himself regardless of the situation so he can take care of his loved ones. Yolo is also mindful of his mental health. He shared, I would spend so much time alone, just meditating, praying, and sometimes just thinking about nothing, looking out to the horizon. Nevertheless, he had a share of anxiety, especially with regard to earning a living. Good thing he had saved and prepared for rainy days like this. He is protected with this life insurance. Sana lahat tayo merong insurance. So, <clears throat> uh, take care of yourself because this pandemic has taught us to be more practical with our spending. You can stay at home. You're not required to go to work or use the car. In the grocery, just get something that you need for now. Now is the time for you to be able to allocate the extra income that you have for the future. We just have to be hopeful that no matter what happens, as long as we are creative enough, as long as we are positive, that as soon as this ends, we will get back to the old grind or the new normal. And so eventually, I think what we're simply saying is take care of yourself. One way of doing that is assess what your mental health needs are. And let me stop at this point. And let me just say um, that we will be sharing, we can, be sh we can share this with you if you're interested. And that Whopper will also be launching a study on the impact of the pandemic in due course. And you might be one of the respondents. You could uh, participate in it as a respondent, no? Uh, secondly, we are also planning to have more webinars. Uh, these first three <clears throat> webinars are uh, introductory. But later on, we'll uh, be diving deeper into uh, the subject as in the succeeding seminars. Thank you very much for listening. And I think we really reserve some time for the exchange and for the sharing of our own thoughts on, on self-care in mental health. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll stop there.
<laughs> Thank you very much again. Okay, so we're now open. The floor is now open for some questions, some uh, ideas that you can share or share with, yeah, share with us. Anybody from our participants, if you have any question? Can I say something? I'd like to say something. Uh, okay. Mom Sally? Yes, Doc. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, by, Doc. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, before I start, uh, we have been hearing Mom Sally Bongaleta talking a lot, ano? but we don't know her yet. Ano? Well, she's also a, a board member of the uh, World of Whopper ano? and also a professor of psychology at Philippine Women's University. So for the information of everybody, <laughs> we are very happy that uh, she's with us. Ano? She's a very prestigious uh, personality. Now I can oh. see that we have a lot of these uh, medical students, uh, the graduating medical students uh, uh, with us. Ano? And I, I like to say something from the perspective of a medical and a paramedical, uh, but medical uh, point of view. Ano? Now I can see that, uh, you know, in, in medical field, uh, especially the graduating, the medical students you know, in their internship years, you know, and this will apply also to the nursing, to also the, uh, the dentists. You know. uh, in this uh, year, last year, it's very important to do practical, to do actual hands-on patient interview, doing the procedure. But because of the pandemic thing of this event, uh, a lot of these things are being compromised, you know? So maybe that's also one of one of the social problem. The, the training is also affected, you know? Like the board exam, the, the board exam, the previous medical board exam, uh, only only one half of the exam was being uh, done, you know? And the other half will be, I think, in September right? or August, you know? And that will join the next batch of the exam. And, uh, so I'm happy that uh, we have a group of these uh, medical students uh, from FEU with us. Ano? Maybe you as medical students, can you share with us some of your, your personal experience on the, the effects of this COVID on your learning and on other, and your life, ano? anybody? Anybody from FEU? From the perspective of medical interns. Oh, they're so quiet. <laughs> Anybody? Hmm? So, uh, well, maybe I can also see that uh, Dr. Jojit, uh, no? Dr. Jojit is in the community in. Uh, in uh, grassroots level, uh, Dr. Jojit is a family physician as well as a licensed uh, social worker. She's with the street children. Uh, no? with the Maybe Dr. Jojit, can you share with us something? Yeah. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank um, Dr. Uh, Mam Lucy and of course the resource persons for sharing their experiences um, in the light of COVID. Uh, Yes, I am also a social worker and working in a shelter currently, and we've been taking care of 12 children. So you could just imagine, these are children coming from the streets. And um, it just so happened that during this COVID period, we have all been locked down in the shelter. And um, there are just two uh, full-time volunteers who are working with the children and trying to cope with the situation. So, I mean, it's really very challenging. And uh, I think you really have to be a bit more creative in so far as how do you cope with the situation. Dealing with street children is a different, again, different challenge because um, they did not grow up from the same uh, uh, environment. So, they have all their individual differences. And so we're coping um, from, from, um, from an age of five until the age of 17. 
most of them were coming from the streets and had been exposed to um, solvent use and other forms of drugs. Some of them have also been homeless. Some of them were taken care of, but were unable to do studies. So with the COVID period of them not going out of the shelter, it's, it's really something like um, it's also happening in a shelter such as ours. And um, um, the mental health challenge or the issues come from different um, uh, dimensions. So it could be a shelter, it could be a home. So each one of us would really have to be able to identify how best we could um, help each other and help the community. Um, by the way, even if I'm in a shelter, I'm also being identified as a medical doctor in our community. So people are coming over to seek help because they are unable to access health services at this time. So... Uh, these things you have to be, um, you have to be able to balance so that uh, you get yourself um, protected at the same time. But at the same time, you're able also to help. So the protective factor of really your spirituality and having a strong faith that God would not really, uh, um, God would protect you in the first uh, as a refuge, and God would be there to give you all the provisions is something that we are hanging on also. And it's the spirituality side is very, very strong since we're in a um, ministry um, um, work. So I, I believe that um, for all of us, we will have different experiences and uh, handling the children as they also cope with COVID is something that you also have to learn. And at the same time, self-care is also very, very important. I've been here since the lockdown and um, that has really uh, taken much of my, <laughs> my what? Uh, it, it, the stress is there, the challenge is there, but you re really have to be able to keep that balance emotionally, mentally, and of course, um, keep yourself healthy enough and protect yourself from further risk outside. So that's how we try to um, cope and um, um, prepare ourselves or, and continue to, um, continue to cope with the situation we are right now. Dr. Tan? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Joji. By the way, Dr. Joji is uh, a community uh, a community physician, you know? and uh, out of her de dedication to uh, to help the poor people at the grassroots level, she even uh, took up uh, social work, you know? so so it's a very nice, very rarely do we see a combination of a family physician and the social worker in one in one personality, you know, so. And uh, together we are working both for street children with uh, Dr. Joje, Dr. Ilaga, and Dr. Pastor Cesar Lucrico. No? Yeah. There, um, excuse me, Sandy. I think there's a um, question in the chat box, no? Okay. From Lida Landicho. Uh huh. What is your perspective on online psychological assessment and online counseling? <clears throat> May I share my? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Lucy. Uh, on ahead. the online counseling first, <clears throat> uh, I think one of the trends now resulting from this pandemic is the telemedicine, which includes telecounseling and teletherapy. Uh, so it's almost inevitable that we will have to make use of this tool, this online counseling. And from what I hear, it, it seems to be working well. I know, for example, uh, one of our, uh, Dr. Tanjo Chong, for example, I think also does this, Dr. Yes. Uh, Ignacio. Uh, and I hear that it has worked well in most cases, okay? Uh, maybe we can ask Dr. Tanjo Chong to talk about it in a short while. On the psychological assessment, 
um, I am not quite sure. I have, I'm of two minds on this one. Because one can do, you know, tele-assessment, for example, you can do still one-on-one -on -one as long as it's not public to everyone. It's between you, the assessor, and the assessee. And here, I think you will have to have informed consent. So this is a bit tricky, especially if the results are going to be hopefully not published. <laughs> it has to be confidential. So there's an ethical issue here, I think. So I will not, I'm not prepared yet for the assessment component. Okay. Uh, so maybe I can ask, we can ask Dr. Uh, Tanjo Chong his thoughts on this one. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, hello, can you hear me? Can you, can, can you hear me? Yes, Doc, we can yes, hear you. Doc. I think, uh, Nowadays, uh, with this COVID uh, thing, uh, inevitably, uh, the, uh, the telemedicine or tele-consultation is something very, very important, I think. Very important. Uh, of course, uh, at, uh, at pre people, I think in the, in the past few, maybe one to two months, people are starting to get adjusted uh, to this kind of a lifestyle. Before, people would always like the personal face-to-face -face, uh, meeting, but uh, with this new normality, people have to learn to adjust to it. Okay? Now, confidential is one thing, I know. And also another issue is the medical legal aspect of this one. No? Because uh, in, in, in the in the person-to-person -person meeting, everything will be confidential, I know. But uh, in the telemedicine, of course, uh, we cannot see the person directly or physically in, in kind in type of a medical legal thing, one has to be very, very careful. Okay. That's something that we have to really explore now. That's one. And uh, at times I feel uh, in this COVID crisis, there's also an opportunity, you know, like uh, when people learn to accept uh, tele, tele consultation, they, even people in far distance, they can avail of this kind of a consultation. Whereas before, before this crisis, people always feel that uh, the consultation, the psychiatric treatment, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, also uh, the consultation, I know, and uh, all of this uh, have to be done in a, on a person to face face uh, basis. You know? But now people come to realize that uh, we can do this. Uh, so even people in far distance, they can avail of this kind of, uh, of therapy. Sometimes even in those situations without, uh, without video, even audio would be enough to help out the people. Thank you. I think there are some questions in the chat box, no? Yes. To check, yeah. uh, mostly asking for a copy of the presentation. I understand there is a button man file. It can be used to share the files for those who are asking for a copy. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Jonah, I'd like to say something, Jonah? Here, there's a there's a comment. Uh, uh, I just would like to ask that since the passage of since the passage of the <clears throat> this is from Darren Venturina no? uh, from FEU. If time still permits, my follow-up question is that with the passage of the Universal Health uh, Act, will this help us secure an organic office personnel that will ensure the development, implementation, and monitoring of policies with regards to mental health? Prior to that, he was saying uh, that are, aren't we winning the battle in raising uh, mental health awareness. And I answered him on the chat and I said, yes, uh, that in fact, it's a blessing in disguise. This pandemic is a blessing in disguise because people are more willing to talk about their mental health concerns. Uh, regarding the <clears throat> having an organic office uh, to secure an organic office that will ensure the development no? and implementation of the law, <clears throat> In fact, as provided in the Philippine Mental Health Law, 
the, the Department of Health should be setting up the mental health division. And perhaps this is where I would invite everybody if you can join us in the advocacy uh, for the DOH to implement what is in the law, that's one. We now have a coalition of NGOs, which we call Human, Human Rights Based Mental Health Advocacy Network. Those of you who wish to be members, please uh, feel free to join. It's free anyway, if you're an NGO or an individual, uh, feel free to join us. <clears throat> um, that's one point for advocacy because the, there are two uh, levels here. One is the political will within the DOH and secondly, the support of the Department of Budget and Management to allocate the necessary uh, funds. Ang nangyayari, lahat ng pondo na pupunta sa pandemic, sa COVID. So they're trying to get it to the point that some of the regular budgets that are meant for mental health, hindi nagagamit. No? So I think we really have to watch. Everybody has to be on the lookout to make sure that what the law says should be implemented. Okay. Uh, may I also add, Lucy, yes. that for yes. all mental health care providers, it is encouraged that they get a copy of the mental health law, read the law, so you would know what's in the law. And then uh, you can share this with people in the communities, families, uh, mental health workers, no? Because it's important that we know the law. Who are those we can approach? Uh, who are the members of the council? Uh, what are their uh, role in the council to ensure that uh, the mental health law will be properly implemented? So I just hope that uh, it's free. You can Google it. You can get a copy. And uh, yeah, that will be a reference every now and then if we get inquiries of uh, asking for help, asking for referral, or how we can help them to be able to make sure that uh, uh, the basic needs of people are addressed. Okay, so some more concerns, questions? One more uh, here, comment. I come from a government hospital. We are looking for a clinical psychologist or psychiatrist to help our mental health service. Do you have a list of those willing to work with hospitals like us, willing to be hired? We need badly. Um, we don't have an immediate list, but we can uh, flag this to some of those in our network, no? Yes. By the way, I can also give my cell phone number to whoever uh, asking this, and maybe I can, I can try to help you link, you know? My number is 0917-895-2366. Uh, 0917-895-2366. Please get in touch with me. We'll try to help you link regarding this matter. Okay. 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 That was a, com uh, a concern from Miss Emily Guerrero. Anong hospital kayo? Miss Emily Guerrero? From what hospital? Anyway, in case my bug inquire, we will get in touch with Miss Emily. Ah, okay. So it's the Gig Pateros District Hospital. Okay. We'll take note of this for uh, any inquiry. Thank you, Miss yes, Emily. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Sally, yes. those of who are interested in joining human, I'm giving my email address so that they can email us if yeah. they want to express interest. No? Yes. 
they have the email address of WAPR or maybe the Philippine Academy can uh, forward it to us, then we will reply. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For those interested to join human, yes. Uh, Dr. Lucy? Yes. Uh, would you like me to put the link of the file here instead so yeah. the attendees can just download it? Ah, yeah, better. So yeah. please yeah. put that uh, so we won't have to gather the emails one by one. Okay. Okay. So attention, all attendees. Uh, the email, uh, the file for Dr. Lucy's uh, presentation a while ago. I'll put it in the link in the chat box now. Okay. Uh, you you may download that file. Thank you. Okay. Back to you, for Miss Ali. Any more question? Uh, any more uh, sharing that you want to share to the group before we uh, give the uh, ch for the closing remark by Dr. Tante Chong? Okay, so if there are no more questions or concerns, may we now give the floor to Dr. Tan Chu Chong for the closing remarks. Hello. I find that we are coming up to an end. Huh? But before we end, I'd like to say, we have to say thank you to Ali Boleta no, for being a very good moderator. No? <laughs> and of course, our two speakers, no? Mom Lucy and uh, Mom uh, Rochi. No? And uh, of course, uh, to, to Mr. Jackson Tan no? for being a very good technical person, ano? and uh, also to, to Lady, ano? a very good uh, secretary of uh, Philippine Academy. So, well, we're very happy today because uh, this is a, uh, a kind of first venture of uh, two organizations, ano? Uh, WAPR and uh, uh, WAPI. Ano? We are both in the field of uh, mental health and also for the well-being and health of the Filipino people. Hmm? So it's, uh, we are able to join hand and together. And uh, we will have two succeeding two to three more sessions. We hope, uh, even though this and uh, we are going to edit today, but uh, this will be a, the start of uh, more things, uh, more working transaction relationship in the years, years to come. Okay. So again, thank you everybody for joining us on and uh, also. Uh, we would also like you to join the humans, uh, no? to be part of the, the mental health of our, of our society. Okay. So thank you very much and uh, see you on August uh, no? August 8th. Uh, no? August, August 8th, yes. The next uh, we'll, session. Uh, okay. So we hope uh, we'll be always in touch. Bye-bye, okay? everybody. Bye-bye. Uh -oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank so you. To all the participants, thank you, Dr. Tan. To all the participants, please note the date. It's August 8th. And the topic is another interesting topic. It will be uh, a psychiatrist will also be one of our, uh, at least uh, I think two psychiatrists will be our lecturer for August 8th. Yes. Uh, it will be, uh, the topic is about preserving your mental health isolated but not alone okay thank you very much everyone and see you august 8th yeah. thank you everybody bye bye thank you thank you bye 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 thank you bye 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 thank you thank you patrick bye. thank you letty bye -bye. hope to see you after thank covid you. yeah thank you thank you letty bye -bye. thanks everybody all thank you so, group picture? A group picture? Ah, yeah. Picture. Kaya lang nakaalis na yung iba. Ah, oh, sige. Oh, oh. Si Rochi, tsaka kayo. Whoever is there pa. Yeah, nawala na yung iba. Oh. 11 na lang tayo. Ay. 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 We're still 75 po right now. Okay. Okay. So quick. <laughs> yeah. awesome. okay. Uh, let's have a group picture. Everybody, your best smile. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Thank next batch. Thank you. One more. One more. One more. Okay.
One, two, three. Okay, that's bye. it. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Thank bye. You so bye bye everyone. See you again. Bye. Bye bye bye. 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 bye.